In this video, I'm going to work through an example where we find the derivative of a composed function. Here's the problem we're going to work on. We're given the demand function for our product as a function of price, 30,000 divided by p, and we're also given price as a function of time, p equals 1.7t plus 12, where t is in days. So the first part is we're actually asked to find demand as a function of t. So what they're asking us to do is compose the functions together. So this formula for p, p equals 1.7t plus 12, all we're going to do is we're going to substitute that in for the p in our demand equation. So d of p is just going to be d of 1.7t plus 12, which will be 30,000 divided by 1.7t plus 12. That's all they're asking for in part a, is for you to substitute the one function into the other function. So part A is done. And now we're asked for the rate of change of quantity when t is 85 days. So here's where things get a little bit tricky. What they want is the derivative of capital D with respect to time, not the derivative of capital D with respect to p. So what we can't do is take the derivative of 30,000 over p. What we have to do is take the derivative of this composed function. So there's really two ways to do this. And it'll be up to you to decide which way you prefer. Either way is going to give us the same answer. So first method number one is to just start with the function that we have. d of t is 30,000 divided by 1.7t plus 12. And just take the derivative. In this case, we can use the quotient rule. So d prime of t is going to be the derivative of the top. The derivative of 30,000 is 0. Multiplied by the bottom, so 1.7t plus 12. Minus the top, 30,000 times the derivative of the bottom, and the derivative of 1.7t plus 12 is just 1.7. And then all divided by the bottom squared, 1.7t plus 12 squared. So 0 times anything is 0, and so what we end up with is negative 30,000 times 1.7 divided by 1.7t plus 12 quantity squared. And so now we just have to plug in 85. we do that, we get d prime of 85, that's what they're asking for, is negative 30,000 times 1.7, all divided by 1.7 times 85 plus 12 parentheses squared. And then all we have to do is type that in our calculators. And when we do all those calculations, we end up with negative 2.08229, depending on how many decimal places they end up asking us for but the units here would be units per day. So we're talking about the rate at which the quantity demanded, which would be however many units are demanded, are changing with respect to time. So units per day. Okay, let me show you a second way to do this problem. Part A is the same, but for part B now, a different way to do this, we'll call this method number two, is to use the chain rule because the chain rule says that the derivative of demand with respect to time is equal to the derivative of demand with respect to price times the derivative of price with respect to time. And the derivative of demand with respect to time, that's pretty easy to figure out because our formula for demand as a function of price is 30,000 divided by p, which is just 30,000 times p to the minus one. So d prime of p that's just an easy power rule. Don't need the quotient rule at all. It's just negative 30,000 p to the minus 2. And the derivative of p with respect to time, well, p as a function of time is given by this simple formula, 1.7t plus 12. So the derivative of that is just 1.7. So that's another formula for the derivative of our quantity. Now, the only problem with it is that it's got a p in it, and they're asking us what the quantity is changing at 85 days. They want that rate of change. So all we need to do is figure out what the value of p is when t is 85. So that's not too bad. We're just going to have to plug 85 in for t, and that's going to give us our value of p. So that'll be 1.7 times 85 plus 12, and that works out to be 156.5. So now we plug that in for the p in our derivative formula, 
negative 30,000 times 156.5 to the negative 2 times 1.7. And that gives us the same answer that we got before, which, which is negative 2.08229. And again, the units are units per day. So again, it's up to you to decide which way of these two methods you like better. So for the first method, we just substituted the one function into the other and then took the derivative like we normally would. The downside of that is that we had a complicated derivative to take. We needed the quotient rule, which is a little bit hard sometimes. For this method, we used the chain rule. So each of the two derivatives that we took were relatively simple. But the downside here was that we had to do a little bit of figuring to figure out the value of p that we were to plug in. We couldn't just plug in 85. So ups and downs for each method, so decide which one you like better, and that's the one you should use.